thank you, Dale. Uh, I'll ask uh, Bill and Yogi and uh, Brent to uh, unmute. Uh, the chat in the background was focused primarily on one thing, one, where, where are the markets and how are we gonna get things to market? And you have addressed that by talking about uh, ammonia and methanol uh, being sort of the partners in the distribution. Are there pipelines for, for hydrogen? Well, there, there are, uh, as you know, we are challenged by pipelines uh, in, in this, uh, this country. We have a, a federal government with a hostile energy policy that has made it very difficult to build pipelines. We're hopeful that uh, that is changing with the increased uh, uh, light that is being shined on energy security. And, and hopefully that uh, they will, uh, um, the feds will come around on, on hydrogen and, and the role that Alberta and Canada could play on the global stage in reducing uh, global greenhouse gas emissions. I, you know, I will say this, uh, even if we could build a pipeline tomorrow uh, and, and, and even if we had the $10 billion uh, to build the pipeline, we'd still have to fill the pipeline and there may not be enough export demand initially. And this is the challenge that, that every jurisdiction is having right now is we could go all in and build all these world scale export facilities. Uh, but if we don't have the demand, then the export facilities fail. So we could also go all in and we could um, create the demand on the, we could create demand on the uh, cons consumption side but if the export uh, or the production is not there, then that's gonna fail. So the challenge, Perry, is how do you find a way for the production and the consumption to have incremental improvements that match each other? And that's what we're trying to do. And so we're trying to, you know, we're fortunate with the oil sands and there's a natural fit to get hydrogen to the oil sands. We're also trying to stimulate local demand by offering uh, the blending of hydrogen uh, for purposes of residential and commercial heating. And, and, and by exporting ammonia and methanol, which is a, a carrier of hydrogen on a train to the coast, that gets us in the export game. And, and uh, it, it helps us with those incremental improvements till we get to a position where, you know, one, there's enough demand for a pipeline and two, we're in a position to build one. Well, Liu Wu, the, the Chinese uh, consulate, made a very strong point of uh, the energy appetite for China. But I won't go any further. Yogi, uh, Dave, I know you've got a question there. I'm going to let Yogi and Bill and uh, et cetera get in first, and then I'll call on you last, uh, last David. Go ahead, Yogi. Thank you, Perry. I appreciate the uh, overview presentation, Minister. That was very helpful. Thank you. Uh, I, there's a couple of things that I was a little surprised that didn't come up. Maybe you're being Mr. Nice Guy today. <laughs> one, of the, one of the huge benefits that I see of the roadmap is how well it's written to align with the agenda of the federal government and gives Alberta points for actually aligning with the uh, agenda of the federal government when so often Alberta is seen as the bad boy, the uh, rogue, out of control capitalist outfit yeah. that doesn't seem to be able to get the message. So I'm yeah. impressed yeah. that in this area, uh, the government is very much aligned. I don't know if you want to jump in with a yeah, I'll make a, I'll make a comment because what, what you just described is the perception of Alberta. And, and there are cabinet ministers like Minister Gubo that think that is Alberta. And then they come here and then they, and then they discover that in fact, Alberta is actually a destination for renewable power companies. Renewable power companies are attracted to Alberta because of our open and free market. And, and so in fact, we're embracing renewable energy at a rate uh, right now faster than other jurisdictions. And the Canadian energy regulator has actually pointed to us as quickly as becoming the destination in Canada. So um, we absolutely are um, you know, forward thinking in terms of, uh, of, of having a diversified portfolio of energy products. Hydrogen is one of them. And we, um, we worked with the feds on their hydrogen roadmap. So I, I, I think it's, it's pretty clear that you know, they are aligned absolutely. The good news is um, the, the federal liberals have, have uh, done many things, including their, their announcement two days ago of their climate strategy, which is, I, I mean, we won't go down that path. Suffice right. it to say, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, well, yeah. that's it's, another it, meeting. Yeah, that's another meeting. So I'll, I'll, I'll call it ridiculous and move on. But there is no light between us and the feds on hydrogen. That is the one right. bit of good news. We worked with them on their roadmap, and and I believe that uh, that they are supportive on hydrogen. Okay, Bill, you, you want to Bill, you want to raise a question? Uh, I think uh, 
after so many years, I'm a bit surprised that the, uh, as you mentioned, the rate of uh, that seems to be occurring in the area. Yeah. Uh, are there a few other issues that you struggle with? What might happen with respect to CO2 tasks or taxes or costs attributed to CO2, whether they go up or down per ton, yeah. and how that influences some of the other foreign countries? Well, um, yeah, I'd like a lot of your technology comments too. The, um, I mean, I'm not concerned about the carbon tax from that perspective um, because there, there won't be a carbon tax on, on hydrogen because it emits zero carbon at ignition. And that's the, that's the beauty of clean hydrogen is, is that it, uh, it when, when you, at combustion, there's no, there's no carbon to be released in the atmosphere. So there won't be a carbon tax. Um, the, the, a carbon tax does make hydrogen more attractive, but I want to make it very clear. I do not want that to be the value proposition for hydrogen because I don't want people to uh, want hydrogen because they're broke going, you know, with natural gas and, and, and other fuels. So I, I don't think that's the answer to go $170 uh, ton of carbon tax that that hurts Albertans. And we don't want to see that. Uh, but, but we do believe that, um, that uh, Albertans and Canadians and, and residents of, the, of, uh, of, of Earth want clean energy products, and hydrogen is that clean energy product. And, and so uh, we want to be able to provide it. Is that estimate of a 200 year supply based on current consumption? Current, where's that 200 year figure come from? Yeah, it's based on current, uh, uh, current consumption. Yeah. Okay. And, but if we get into this big time, is that 200 or 100 or 10? I, you know, I think if we get into this big time. It, we, I mean, sure, we could make it a hundred, but I, I think uh, I think a hundred years is a, is a pretty good runway for an energy product. A hundred years from now, um, you know, they'll be they'll be splitting some molecule you and I have never heard of uh, to produce energy. So, um, I, I don't know. The challenge is our natural gas, just like our oil, is it is a significant resource and it's worth something today. It's probably not going to be worth much 100 years from today. So we want to leverage that in any way that we can. Okay, Brent, uh, your turn. Uh, and I know you've got a convention coming up, so don't hesitate. And Dale's sort of giving you the opening there. But uh, proceed. Well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll jump on that right away. That's a, that's a great plug. We're, we're so excited, um, you know, with the Canadian Hydrogen Convention coming up at the end of April, April 26th to 28th. This is going to be one of the largest uh, events, certainly in the Edmonton region, in quite some time where we're looking at, you know, potentially up to 4,000 people coming in uh, from around the world, uh, looking at the hydrogen opportunities here in Alberta, in Canada. So, you know, potentially up to 20 international delegations, uh, very significant speaker program. We have the chairman of Air Products coming in and it's, you know, to get, to get someone like to that come, to come to Edmonton for this event is just incredible. So we're really proud of that. Uh, it really just speaks again to the opportunity that we're seeing here. And maybe just the other thing I'd highlight, um, you know, the, I think the minister really hit it, hit it perfectly on the head around the opportunity. But the one thing maybe just to add is, you know, once you're seen to be a, a reliable supplier of low cost, low carbon hydrogen, you know, what else can that do for your economy? So you know, it kind of speaks a bit to that diversification agenda. But as global supply chains are changing, you know, we're starting to get some really interesting inquiries from investors, from uh, from industry around the world to think, well, maybe there's an opportunity here to be doing some things that maybe traditionally we haven't been so focused on. So, you know, it's still early days of those conversations, but I think we're really at the, the cusp of some pretty significant changes. And I think, you know, Edmonton and Alberta is, is positioned very well when you look at things like the uh, the policy and regulatory framework around CO2 storage, the, the CO2 hubs that were announced today. So I think that's really positioning us nicely. And we can then interact with these investors to say, you know, we've got that low cost energy here that you're looking for, but not just for the next 10 years, but for the next 50 years for these facilities that are going to be around for a long time. So I think that's the other piece of the uh, the conversation we want to highlight. And then maybe just finally, the Edmonton Region Hydrogen Hub that we're, we're very much a part of is really working to build demand. So I saw some questions in the chat around transportation, for example. So the feeling is that, you know, if we can do a little more work on building demand with key sectors like long haul trucking, I'm not sure if we're going to see necessarily demand for passenger vehicles using hydrogen, maybe for some fleets. Um, but uh, some of these sectors are still very large when you look at the trucking sector, the trucks going up and down the highway from Edmonton to Calgary. If you can take a coordinated approach to that, now you can really accelerate demand for hydrogen, which may lead to more production, which improves the overall economics, which could also fund some of the infrastructure that will even make further improvements. You know, if you can start to look at some domestic pipelines to move hydrogen around your region, uh, then you can really start to attract even more investment here. So it's very uh, synergistic in nature. And I just thought that would be worth highlighting as well. 
I sure. agree with everything that Brett uh, uh, just said. Yeah. Um, you know, I want Alberta to be viewed as a global leader in hydrogen. And that means we're not just using hydrogen, we're producing hydrogen, we're exporting hydrogen. We have things like this hydrogen conference so that we are seen as a global. When people think hydrogen, I want them thinking of Alberta. I'd, I'd love to see that hydrogen is bought and sold in Alberta, priced in Alberta. Uh, I mean, that would, be, that would be exciting to see that level of, uh, of standards set for hydrogen. It's, it's lofty, it's optimistic, but we're already global leaders in hydrogen production. We just have to flip the switch and make it clean hydrogen production. Do uh, you feel that industry is aligned? Is industry understanding the story? Absolutely, Ab absolutely, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I know you've got a few more, or maybe one more question. Dave, Dave you've raised one that's unique. Uh, what about using gray water or produced water for H2 production? The minister was saying about, uh... Uh, it'll take a hundred years to split molecules and stuff like that. I propose that this is, it's already happening today. Mm -hmm. um, we've, uh, our company is involved with some researchers who have essentially creates hydrogen out of water without electricity. So it's a catalytic reaction that does this. And the results are very, very promising and could be, you know, uh, uh, bring in the opportunities for hydrogen fueled cars where you simply fill your car with water and some catalyst and you can generate uh, through an internal combustion engine. Uh, the same thing goes for home heating, uh, et cetera. You, every home has a, a source of water. You just use your gray water and you can produce hydrogen from that and heat your homes uh, through a typical furnace and replace natural gas. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting technology. We're going to be explaining a little bit more about that in the future. And uh, who's we, who's I want we? to let you know. Tell us what your company's name is. It's a new spinoff company from Applied Quantum Materials. Um, the new company is Dark Matter Materials. And um, it will be, uh, we'll be launching in, uh, within the next month. Hey, let me say, I, I look forward to uh, continuing to, to track your, your company and, and seeing more. And, and it's very exciting. As I said early on, I, we are agnostic to the color of hydrogen. If somebody, uh, and it sounds like you are, wants to come to Alberta and hire Albertans to, uh, to, to build your facility and run your facility, uh, listen, that, that's exactly what we want to do. That's why we're going down this path. Um, you know, I... I um, I, I, you know, I have some concerns because of uh, on the recycling, you can't recycle the water. Uh, I like your idea of using gray water. Um, so I, you know, and, and uh, uh, I'm not sure that we would be able to get it to the world scale, um, you know, production that we'd like to see on the, on the blue hydrogen. And that's why I said, I, I anticipate we'll see more niche, but, but listen, I, you know, if, as long as, if, if, uh, if your technology is successful and you're going to hire Albertans to, to deploy it, you know, that's exactly why we're going down this path. And that's why, that's why we have a hydrogen roadmap and it's not a blue hydrogen roadmap. Um, if, if companies step up like David's is, we'll, we'll absolutely embrace that. So Peter, I, do you have time for one more question? We love one more and then I do have to go after okay, this. One. Peter, go ahead. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> well, I proposed, I posed two questions. So maybe the one that you, my first one you answered to some degree. So my second question, Mr. Minister, thank you for your, your talk is how can Alberta promote hydrogen consumption uh, yeah. in Alberta, yeah. pardon me, as well as in Canada and, and abroad. And I, I note, for example, and one of my colleagues is on the line here, he might add some more, but I noted that Alberta has actually assisted, uh, you know, uh, Canadian Pacific in developing their hydrogen powered train. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just wondering about, you know, more hydrogen power for things like trains and long haul, as you mentioned, you know, trucking. Uh, so if you could comment on that, I appreciate sure, it. Absolutely. And that's, it goes back to the, we want to have incremental increases to production and consumption to match each other. And, and so mobility is part of that. And, uh, you know, Brent mentioned that uh, we're probably not going to see passenger cars. I mean, uh, I, I, I hope we do, but, but Brent's right. We probably won't, but uh, I see it happening for buses, trains. We're going to be, uh, we won't be, but there will be a pilot uh, this year. We'll have two long haul transport trucks going between Edmonton and Calgary. That'll be uh, fueled by hydrogen uh, the city of Edmonton has ordered their buses. I, that will be part of, uh, of getting that demand up there. The other part will be the blending. Um, you know, if, you, if, you, if we go back 10 or 15 years, there was an opportunity for people to self-select on the utility bills that they wanted wind, and they were willing to pay more for it. Now, we all know 
you know, how the electricity works. They weren't actually getting electricity from, you know, those powered by wind, but they were paying more so that it could happen. And, and so we may see that that may be a business model that we see taking off. Uh, lots of these things have yet to be worked out, but those are the kind of things that we see uh, moving forward. There is a, um, um, there is a company that is looking at, and I'm not going to say the name because I, I don't know if it's been announced, but they're looking at having a hydrogen community. And if, 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 if it's been announced, then, then please you throw out the name but, uh, and give them a plug. But there is a, a, a builder that wants to have a hydrogen community uh, in Alberta, that, and, and, and they want to get to pure hydrogen too, not just the blend. So it's, it's happening now. Um, you know, we, we know California has 7,000 hydrogen fueled vehicles. We want to get Alberta to that tipping point. Right where we see that happening here. So, well, thank you. You've given us thank a few you. minutes more than uh, than we'd asked for or expected. So, th thank, thank you. Very much. Your staff that. just walked in. I really have to go. I, well, like I said, I love talking about hydrogen. I really do. Perry, I'm glad that you were able to put this together so we could uh, make this conversation happen. I've certainly enjoyed well, it. Well, one, one concluding observation. I mean, the world of energy is a world of controversy today, and this is one of the first love ins that I've uh, moderated. So, uh, I've got to thank you very much. And uh, and thank you for the respectful questions that have been raised. So yeah. you're welcome to join us at any time. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Perry. Thanks, everybody, for the great questions. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Again. Okay.